light book. So we sort this light out a wee bit. Still poor. Morning. Morning, folks. Morning, everyone. How are we all this morning? You need to excuse the light being bad. It's uh, just the way it is, I'm afraid. Um, need to move that light that's behind me. Anyway, I hope you're all well. It's been a wee while, although I was on yesterday for a couple of minutes. Nice to see the numbers climbing. It's nice to see you are still watching. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, that light is terrible. Anyway, no much I can do about the light, folks. It's just the way it is, I'm afraid. Maybe just alter it a wee bit. Nah. Don't know what the script is with the light this morning. Just the way it is. Anyway, nice to see you. The other numbers are climbing rapidly. 10.30, so let's get on. We'll start today as we always do with a coronavirus update. Then we'll move on to review the weekend's news, okay? Oh, it's the light in, no, it's terrible. Has it shot them? Nah, it's not working because of where that spotlight's pointed. Sorry, we was just having a discussion with the director about the quality of light this morning. <laughs> anyway, coronavirus update, these are the figures for Valentine's Day, the 14th of the 2nd, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores, 1,626,198. Um, and that's plus 4,566 from Saturday to Sunday. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores. 191,816. And that was plus another 903 um, positive cases. All right. In hospital... There is 1,442 COVID patients, that's doing seven. In the intensive care units, there is 104 COVID patients, that's doing six. Um, vaccinated. A 1,223,774 people have been vaccinated in Scotland so far, and that was plus 50,000. 329 from Saturday to Sunday. Deaths. I'm sorry to report there's been a further four deaths, possible deaths, reported from Saturday to Sunday, taking that figure to 6,715. Community and hospital deaths combined now stands at 8,726. Okay, so that's the coronavirus update. Let's move on to um, review the weekend's news. We'll start on Friday the 12th of February 2021. Friday started with a mixed bag in the rags. Um, we had the report on child abuse in football. Um, the Sam and the Sturgeon saga. And quarantine hotels, okay. The report on um, child abuse in football tells a damning tale of clubs looking the other way, of responsible adults looking the other way, and there's 93 uh, recommendations in the report. Let's hope that these 93 recommendations are taken up. Alright. Now the Salmon Sturgeon saga um, is in the news again. As a Scottish judge tells an English publication, or a Scottish publication, whoever they were, how to circumvent Scots law in order to get what they want. And apparently what Mr. Salmon wants and all. And that would be this information published um, to the public. So, now there's a chance that Mr. Salmon will appear before the inquiry, before the end of this month. I believe he's scheduled for something like the 24th. And that Nicola Sturgeon, or the 28th, sorry, and Nicola Sturgeon the following week, the 6th. So, we'll see where that goes. 
They say the unionists are gone full pelt at this one. They see this as a crack in the SNP, and some of the bile coming out of the Conservatives this weekend so could see them in court. Alright? And uh, the Quarantine Hotel saga leads to a stushy between the UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock and the First Minister. We heart was Hancock telling Scots to fly into English airports that they can quarantine at home rather than the Scottish Government's request that a uh, Scottish uh, citizens arriving in our UK should be put into quarantine hotels the same as everybody else who's arriving in our UK. So that's a stushy that's going to go on. But I mean, this quarantine hotel thing, well, we'll get to that a wee bit further along. Sunday, to be precise, in the report. Okay. Right, moving on to Friday. The Office for National T Statistics reveals a stat stating that the UK economy shrank by 9.9% in 2020 due to COVID-19. Okay. Um, the economy um, avoided a double-dip recession, apparently, because of the opening up in December for Christmas. But remember, that opening up in December for Christmas had a bloody high toll. It was paid for in the blood of our relatives. Nothing should have been opened up. Nothing. But we find ourselves once again in a situation where the Scottish Government are basically powerless and have to follow through with what Westminster was doing. Because if the Scottish Government hadn't opened up at Christmas along with Westminster, there would have been bloody riots up here. So, because Westminster was opening up, Welsh people, Irish people, Scottish people, all expected the same for their governments. And as a result, we've all played in bloody blood. The death toll since Christmas has been bloody disgraceful. And that's due to comp incompetence at Westminster. As I say, if the Scottish Government hadn't followed suit and opened up for that wee while over Christmas, there would have been bloody riots here. But we have seen the consequences through January and now into February. As we've seen a new spike and a massive amount of people die. 121,000 plus in the UK. Absolutely atrocious. And it would appear they're about to make the same mistake again. But we'll get to that and all. Alright. Friday. Two of the bifab uh, fabrication sites are bought out of administration for a paltry 850000 by a London-based uh, company, Infrastrata. Infrastrata have purchased the sites in Methil in Fife and the yard at Arnish on the Isle of Lewis. The site at Burnt Island wasn't to the liking, so there'll be a hit to the people and the economy in Burnt Island, unless somebody else takes that yard there. Alright? Um, now, Infrastrata say they intend to use these sites for ship um, maintenance and a ship construction and the renewable energies. We'll see where it goes. It could be back in, um, unless Infrastrata can come up with contracts, say maybe for maintenance for Caledonia McBrain or something like that, then there's every chance the years will go straight back into bloody administration. Friday. The Scottish whisky industry reports a £1.1 billion slump in sales due to the COVID-19 pandemic, with pubs, clubs and restaurants closed right across the world. And of course there's the imposition of the 25% tariffs that have been placed on Scottish whisky, tweed and certain other uh, Scottish uh, exports by the Trumpster when he was in power in America, all right. So the Scottish uh, whisky industry takes a hit a 1.1 billion, reducing revenues from uh, 2019 to 2020 from 5 billion to 3.9 billion, all right. Friday. Um, the leasing of Scottish seabed for a, a energy projects in Scotland a, is halted to make up a um, to make upgrades a, and adjustments to the starting bids 
Right, as it turns out, when the Crown Estates um, started the leasing and licensing projects in England and Wales, um, the prices that were achieved for these sites in England and Wales were phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So it would appear that the Scottish Government and the Crown Estates here in Scotland, which was the which uh, was devolved to Scotland via the Smith Commission, put a stop on the process to um, readjust the start and bid price for these in accordance with what was going on um, in the bidding in England and Wales, which is absolutely the right thing to do. Um, so the bidding process will recommence on the 24th of March. Um, it was meant to end on the 31st of March, um, but a, a new a end date will have to be announced, all right? Um, new, where are we? The leasing of the um, seabed in England and Wales will, will raise revenues of 900 million a year, which will go to the Treasury, um, with the Crown getting a slice here, okay? And when these projects come online in England and Wales, the Crown will get a 2% 2% of any revenues that are made from these wind turbines in England and Wales, okay? Um, so, as you can see, this is going to be a real revenue raiser. The question is, is Scotland going to be robbed of this revenue again, the way it was with oil and gas? Or are we going to move forward and take control of these things ourselves? All right. Now, Crown Estate Scot uh, Scotland is operated by the Scottish Government with the revenues allegedly staying in Scotland. All right. Chairwoman of the Crown Estates, Scotland Amanda Bryan, said it was only right to stop the process to review it um, and they uh, adjust things upwards. The Scottish Renewable Energy Chief uh, Executive, Queer uh, Mac, said the Scottish re renewable industry was feeling frustrated as the process was already 14 months behind schedule. But that's tough, maximising the income for, for the people of Scotland from our own resources is very important. Right? So the Davy says, but as quite right, hold the process, adjust the prices, reopen the project, uh, process, because there's really big players getting in on this. As we see the oil companies moving away for um, carbon uh, fuels towards renewable energy. I mean, BP and Shell were two of the biggest bigger bidders for the English and Welsh um, licenses uh, of the seabed down there. So uh, I would imagine that these big oil companies will be wanting a slice of Scotland as well. All right. Friday, all dental students in Scotland are told they will have to repeat their final year as they haven't had enough a uh, um, hands-on experience, obviously because um, of the pandemic. They haven't been able to actually treat anybody or they haven't really enough hands-on experience in order to qualify. So the dental students are going to have to repeat the year. That might happen across other uh, parts of the higher education system as well. Okay. Friday, the Salmond Inquiry in Holyrood reschedules the First Minister's appearance before the committee in light of the court ruling on Thursday. Mr Salmon's lawyers are looking at the judgement to see if he would now appear. The women involved in the saga say the inquiry has become a more devastating than the trial as it's being used as a political part, a, a by political parties in Holyrood for political gain and she's absolutely right and we have seen some outrageous behaviour over the weekend by members who are on that committee. Murdo Fraser, for example, tweeting Valentine's poems about how, allegedly, the First Minister and her husband had the misled the Parliament. The inquiry's no earlier. yet. This is what you call prejudging the outcome of an inquiry. And we also had that in the papers at the weekend, where they were speculating if Miss Sturgeon had been found to have breached the ministerial code, she would have to go. Once again, we have got political people and political parties trying to manipulate the system and prejudge the outcome of an inquiry for their own political gain. 
the people of Myrtle Fraser and Alex Cole-Hamlin should be booted right off that committee, the inquiry committee, because it's quite clear that him, uh, Myrtle Fraser, Alex Cole-Hamlin and Jackie Bailey have all prejudged the outcome. How can you have an impartial inquiry when you've got three members of the committee who, uh, who are conducting the inquiry prejudging the outcome and putting it out there in social media. And that gets worse when the BBC kick in. The BBC kick in, I will get it up. Alright. So, you know, you keep your eyes on the prize here, kids, and keep away from these side shows. SMP must have, as I've said before, a majority in May, or we can kick independence down the line for 10, 15, 20 years. Because the muck slinging has just started. And this is going to get absolutely dreadful. Um, Project Fear Mark II has already started. We, last week with that idiot for the London School Economic Support, which was ripped to bits in two minutes by George Canover and uh, Professor Richard Murphy. And as uh, George Canover said, all these economists are speculating that Scotland couldn't afford to be independent because they're well going down the pub to have a pint. Because they haven't got a scooby and they'll get in right in the first place anyway. Alright, moving on to Saturday the 13th of uh, February 2021. Sorry, we're not moving on to Saturday yet. Friday, Douglas Ross Dross appears on the Andrew, Andrew Neil show to tell Andrew Neil that Scottish ministers um, should face criminal charges for going forward with an independence referendum, which Mr. Dross, right, Douglas Ross, the irrelevant little twat, claimed would be illegal. But it wouldn't be illegal, as we already know, because the 2019 Referenda Act was passed into law in January 2020 by the Crown. So any referendum held in Scotland would be legal, because it's already been passed into Scots law. Simple as that. And then, of course, we had the statement for the professor who, uh, um, of law for the United for the UN ex a um, boss of that particular department in the UN saying Scotland could hold a legal referendum under a uh, UN law and it would be recognised internationally. So what we are seeing here is Project Fear Mark II is underway. We've got the Tories threatening to jail our leaders if they go ahead with a legal referendum. And we've got economists in London trying to tell us we're too wee, too poor, and too stupid again. Alright. Whereas we know fine well England can't he feed itself, can't he power itself, can't he eat itself. It's them that are too poor, too wee, and too stupid. That just happens to be a fact. They have a service sector economy, and they've blown it because the Brexit deal means that they've no access to the European markets with their service sector economy. Absolute numpties. But as I said in yesterday's broadcast, don't blame the English people. Blame the bloody elite, because they own the media. England is the last colony of the British elite. Right, now we're moving on to Saturday. Right, so we'll just have a quick run through Saturday and what the rags had to see. Right. Um, the Scotsman goes on care home visits to get the green light alright well we knew that knew that they've had their first jags um, they've got a wee bit protection, they don't have full protection but they've got a wee bit protection <laughs> now we need to go on with getting these care home, home residents or second jags so that family members can get round to see them, remember it takes three weeks to build up just that wee bit immunity for the first jag and it'll probably take three weeks once with the second jag and all. But, as I say, um, procedures will be put in place and guidance will be put in place for care homes to allow relatives to visit. But the interesting thing about that is, there's already guidance on care home visits for family members who take uh, the lateral flow test and get PPE'd up to get into care homes. A lot of the care homes are trying to protect their own backs and they're not letting people in after rain backs. Because they don't want sued. If somebody goes and visits somebody in a care home and takes COVID into it, 
and all of a sudden other people's relatives have pegged it. Remember, these places are private enterprises. Alright, um, the Herald claims more Scots are going into care homes earlier. Um, and they, they also go on an opinion piece by Michael Hessenstein claiming that the SNP, if the SNP lose Indy Ref 2, they will move on to Indy Ref 3. Bally whole chaps, I do believe they've got it! Shite, did you scare me? Uh, Michael Hesselton, what are you making us? Another has been telling us what the SNP are going to do. Of course the SNP are going to move from Indy Ref 2 to Indy Ref 3 if this one's rigged again and all. And we don't want it. Because that's the raison d'etre. That's the reason they exist. To bring home Scottish independence. Wow, my, Michael Heseltine's a real rocket science, isn't he? scientist, isn't he? You've never seen anything like it in your life. Hey, I say, old boy, I do believe he's got it. And the rest is up within the bloody same thing at all. Until we break free for that shower of crap down that road. The mismanagement that we've seen in the last ten years. The genocide that's taking place amongst the poor and the disabled. Over the last 11 years of Tory rule. But I mean, imagine that, a Tory actually realising that the SNP and the independence movement's no going away. Wow. And when 76% of your kids want it, it would be bloody remissious to let it go away. And when 76% of your kids want it, then I've got a fair, fair idea that we're going to win this next one. That's why they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at us. Madam Director's having a wee giggle at that. Right, the Daily Fail says schools eh, might not reopen um, because apparently um, we're pretty well stuck. The, the foreign COVID numbers have stalled according to the Daily Fail. But eh, hey, oh, you know, one or the other, <laughs> it doesn't matter, we'll move on. Uh, the Telegraph is hot with Hancock stating that COVID will be, uh, we'll have to live with COVID the same way we live with the flu. We um, probably need annual vaccinations. Kerching, Kerching, Kerching. Somebody's making a lot of money. And the Telegraph it reports um, the Tories have got a plan to shrink the armed forces by 10,000 troops over the next 10 years, so that'd be a thousand troops a year, all right. That would see full-time soldiers fall to 76,000 in the UK, the smallest number ever. In fact, Scotland's Defence Force, when we get our independence, will probably be bloody bigger than that. You know, when I was in myself, there was 100, about 186,000 uh, soldiers fully employed by the state to protect the state. You're talking about 76,000 people here to protect this island. Wow. Eh? The irons a story that the UK border chaos, uh, border chaos in a COVID-19 and a fake COVID-19 certificates for sale. Now, the I goes on to say that these developments will put fears in Scotland that the UK... Um, Quarantine measures will no stop people from getting in and new variants getting in, and rightly so. You know, we crossed this once and we opened up, and what happened? Second wave, big style, lots more deaths. And it's looking like the Tories are going to do the very same thing again. They're going to open up too early. Right. But, eh... Uh, you know, this has went into a false douche between a uh, Matt ha Harpless Hancock and the First Minister and Scotland's uh, Health Minister, Jim Freeman. Because, let's face it, when we do get a handle on this again, if they Harpless twats down that road open up again too early, then we're in for wave number three. Simple as that. It's also led to um, the First Minister thinking about a uh, um, putting border a... Uh, posts up at the main crossings between Scotland and England. Right. Now, the Sun on Saturday, it ran on the child abuse report um, in football. 
with the headline saying that there are calls for Celtic and Rangers to apologise to their starlets of the past in person. You know, which must be pretty upsetting for Rangers fans. I'm not much of the football anymore, but if I remember right, they used to run about parking, shouting Big Jock New and all that. All of a sudden, the football report comes out, and apparently all the clubs had a similar problem, including bloody Rangers. You know? Right, the Daily Record headlines uh, on Professor Linda Ball stating staycations could be back on the cards in Scotland come the summer. But if we open up again in the summer the way we did, then we're going to import more cases for England than what we did anywhere else. And hey ho, wave number three will be here. Right. The National goes on, EU won't leave Scotland, eh? as it's a MEP gives announcement of a, a welcome for a Scotland after independence. Well, you know, the EU's playing games at the moment, so we'll just have to take that with a pinch of salt. And it also is an article by Angus uh, Robertson saying, both Beth, votes SNP and me. I'm not telling you how to vote. Hello. Make your own mind up. Apparently the director's going to tell you to vote me SNP 1 and 2, but I'm yeah. not. All right, have a look at the situation in your own area and make your mind up for there. All right. Right, Saturday, it's also reported that 14,000 birds at a game bird a rearing site in Fife to be killed after an outbreak of a H5N1 a avian flu breaks out at the site. There's also going to be um, quarantine uh, measures put on the place in the hope that it doesn't spread to other um, commercial um, units out there, you know. Chickens and eggs and crap like that. Right, so let's move on to Sunday. Sunday the 14th of February. Sunday started off with Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab appearing on the Andrew Marr show where he is questioned on post-Brexit trade, um, the post-Brexit uh, trade catastrophe and international trade deals. Raab again uh, utters the lies that what we are seeing at the moment is just teething problems as people get a grip with the paperwork. But the fact is, it's no. The EU has made it clear, this is the new normal, soak it up, buttercups, it's what you voted for. All right. So, eh, the other thing that Rab asks the people today is take the long view. He says, things will pick up in 10 years. Now, there's a Davy says here. Davy says, why did Rab come away with such a statement? Well, the answer's quite simple. It takes between 7 and 10 years to negotiate a comprehensive trade deal. Right, so we're looking at 10 years down the line before we've got any major trade deals in place. So isolationist UK is where we're at. But Davy also says, it's more likely that Jacob Rees-Mogg is correct. Because Mogg said that it would take 50 years to recover from Brexit, but it would be worth it. Wow. Sunday, it's reported that Irish MEPs would like a, the NI pro, pro, protocol grace period extended. Now, they want to extend it so they can have a look at whether NI, Northern Ireland, could have a similar sort of arrangement as the Swiss day. The Swiss have been in alignment on food and agriculture with the EU since 2009, so there are no checks on food and agricultural products moving back and forth between Switzerland and the EU and the EU and Switzerland. Problem with that is, it ain't going to happen. So, Irish MEPs can look all they want. The problem here will be Westminster. Westminster doesn't want to stay aligned with the EU on anything in case it impacts in future trade deals with other blocks like a uh, the Americans or a uh, the South the South Asian trade bloc they're trying to get in. Alright? So there will be no um change in the NI protocol and there will be no Swiss style deal for agricultural products moving between the UK and Northern Ireland and Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland and the EU. 
And the reason for that is quite simple. Westminster won't stay aligned. It doesn't want to. If it wants a trade deal with America for a start, it will have to drop food standards and agricultural practices. So, MEPs from the south of Ireland are wasting their bloody time and the Irish, Northern Irish, especially the Unionists, have been thrown under a bus and you've heard Davy say this often enough, Northern Ireland is being shoved out the door. The most unionist part of the Union is being shoved out the door. It costs 24 billion quid a year to keep the province afloat. The Tories won't do that. The Tories will orchestrate a situation where things get that bad in Northern Ireland that they will have to reunify. You can bet your boots on that. Alright? Sunday, Bojo the Clown and his Muppets eh, in Westminster to give the go-ahead to a tunnel from Scotland to Northern Ireland. Pure pie in the sky. Absolute pie in the sky crap. This is another London bridge. Right? Money will be spent on architects and engineers in London from the Scottish budget, may I add, the Scottish infrastructure budget, and a shovel will never see the ground. Ever. A bit like the London Garden Bridge, where Bojo spent 53 million quid on getting the plans drawn up, getting the architects the, and engineers to work out how to put that bridge across the Thames, which isn't really a big gap at all, and not a shovel, shovel made it into the ground. It was just getting money to his pals. And that's what this is all about as well. This is tell Jock we're going to give him some treats and that will stop him from wanting to leave the Union. As if we couldn't, as the best engineers in the world, design and build a tunnel or a bridge to Northern Ireland ourselves if we bloody well wanted to. But we don't. Why would we want a bridge to Northern Ireland? Or a tunnel to Northern Ireland? But there's a Davy says here and all. Even if Westminster did somehow miraculously managed to put a tunnel under that particular stretch of sea or on the seabed of that particular stretch of sea which is full of nuclear waste and jettisons, jettisoned munitions Davy Boy would they be taking a truck through it? Have you seen the mess they've made of contracts, public contracts in that road? PPE and um, test and trace as I say, Bojo's London Bridge there's absolutely no chance that Davy would drive through a tunnel constructed by these nutters. No chance. They're charlatans, they're thieves, and they're fraudsters. And I certainly wouldn't be driving through it, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be the only one taking that attitude. Okay. So, you know, if we look at the cock-ups of the public contracts that have been awarded since Bojo and his clowns came to power, there's absolutely no chance in hell that that bridge will, uh, that tunnel will ever get uh, um, built. And even if they then change their mind and say, all right, we'll build a bridge, it would only be open about 100 days a year because of the wind. So, and the seas. <laughs> see, this stuff's pure fantasy, pure pie in the eye, pure, pure pie in the sky. Sunday, 24 hours before quarantine hotels to come into play across the UK, the UK Border Force reports it has been giving no guidance on how it will work or how they are supposed to police it. Typical Bojo the Clown's government's incompetence. Alright. Sunday. The Stussy early at the hotel quarantine between Scotland and the Scotland's government in Westminster gets louder. Matt the Hapless Hancock tells Scots arriving back in the UK via English airports just to get him in quarantine. But the first minister, as I said earlier, wants the UK government to quarantine, uh, to quarantine travellers arriving in England who intend to travel on to Scotland and quarantine hotels down that road. But what we have here is a case of Westminster just telling Scotland, get it round ye, we're going to send them up the road and you'll just have to deal with them when they get there. Meaning that people will be travelling large distances across the UK with a chance of contaminating people the length and breadth of the UK. Not just in Scotland, but in England as they travel. Alright. 
as I say, um, the First Minister's looking at border posts um, on the main arteries into Scotland to try and find these people and batter them into quarantine hotels. But I don't think they're going to be able to do it because I think the whole mass of officers will step in and tell Police Scotland to back away. Scotland's pretended parliament will be overruled again. Right? Sunday, Secretary of State for Scotland, Alistair Union Jack, says it's the SNP's fault that Bojo the Clown is so unpopular in Scotland. Mr Jack appears to be wired to the moon and living in a different bloody universe. The reason why the Tories, and not just Bojo's administration, but the last two administrations have been so unpopular in Scotland is because of their policy programme. The reason why the SNP are popular in Scotland is because of their policy programme. But, you know, when you're cutting benefits to the disabled, taking away their uh, um, personal uh, independence payments, their mobility cars, when you're persecuting them to death, when you're uh, sanctioning people on, who are already on the breadline for three months at a time, leaving them with nothing, and killing them, because let's face it, you don't feed somebody, you can't eat themselves, they die. They become ill, they die. That's what happens. Right? So, these policies, and of course we have the internal market bill and the Brexit saga, these are the reasons why Bojo the Clown and the Tories are no popular in Scotland. Let's face it, Car Crash was probably the most uh, popular Tory leader that they've had in years. And Car Crash was a disaster. But he had the Tories at 26%. Because he was a traditional Tory, and traditional Tories in Scotland could get in line with that. But since Dross came into the seat, eh, well he isn't really in the seat, Ruthie, Ruth the Muth's in the seat, the dying commander. But since Dross eh, became the leader of the Scottish Conservative Party, then the Tories have dipped for twenty six percent and they have dropped for twenty six percent of the polls to um nineteen percent of the polls. And it looks like Scottish Labour who are an absolute disaster and non-entity, are going to overtake them again. Alright? Okay, Sunday I decided to have, sit down and have a wee look at what's going on across the pond. Alright? So as we know, um, the Republican Party voted down Trump's impeachment and the first thing Trump did was take to Twitter to tell his supporters 70 odd million of them that the Make America Great program goes on. Now, people right across the planet should be looking in in horror. There is speculation that the, um, the Republican Party could split and the third party emerging in America, a, right, a real right wing fascist uh, party where disenfranchised white Americans and racists could very well tear the United States to bits. So it could well be that the United States might not exist much longer either, as the states that are a, um, liberal and the states that are fascist go their separate ways. So we haven't seen the last of Trump, it would appear, folks. And the speculation on the damage that he can still do is rife across the pond. It really is. You know? And, uh, of course, we're going to take into consideration how Biden feels about Bojo the Clown. Now, there's a campaign running here in Scotland to compare Bojo the Clown with Trump. Right? An independence campaign. Uh, and they're putting billboards up around Scotland. But, uh, you know... You've got to take Biden's attitude to Bojo the Clown, because he thinks he's Trump and all. You know, I mean, what Biden said about Bojo the Clown when Bojo tried to suck up to Biden was that he was a creep and a shape shifter. So, any American, uh, UK American trade deal is definitely off the bloody cards. So, Bojo's in deep doo-doo, because the UK is floating free, we need trade deals of any significance with anybody. So, you see, Jacob Rees-Mogg's uh, prediction that it would take 50 years to uh, feel the benefits of Brexit 
could well be correct, because it could well take us 50 years just to get back to where we were. Before breakfast, at Brexit. <laughs> now that's because I'm hungry and I'm thinking about breakfast. <laughs> right. So we haven't seen the last of the Trumpster. And there could be a lot of trouble in the United States, a lot of civil unrest. Okay. But uh, let's move on to Monday morning. As you know, Mondays, uh, um, I do this programme early in the morning, so I review each day the day after. All right, so all I've got for you this morning is what the papers have to say, and it's what the English papers have to say today, all right? Because I couldn't see um, the, what the papers had to say in Scotland today because it wasn't posted. All right, and I don't buy the rags. I get the headlines straight out of um, the internet, all right? So anyway, the Metro goes on. 15,062,184 reasons to be cheerful. So apparently... The UK has passed a 15 million um, jab a, a milestone, all right? The Looney Rag, the Express goes on. Meghan and Harry delighted. Um, apparently, a Meghan has got a, is pregnant with a second child. And Hancock, now let's move to 32 million, basically moving the target up. Now they've passed the 15 million for everybody getting their first jab. But as I say, this is where the mistakes are going to be made here, folks. Because these are people with their first jags. And the Tories down there will already be clamouring for the economy to be opened up again. Right? The eye goes on. Eh, over 65 is next for vaccination after 15 million target reached. And fair enough. The mirror goes on. Harry and Meghan... Uh, and uh, the fact that Megan's uh, pregnant again. And the road to freedom. And that's the speculation that Bojo will lift restrictions in England by Easter. See what I mean? Are we going to open up again? Wave number three coming. Uh, they're already talking about opening up for the Easter holidays. Bloody hell, we're lucky for schools are back for that. Right, the telegraph goes on. Meet grandkids. Outside in March, he's in the lockdown in England again. The time goes on. The times goes on. Johnson eyes Easter escape. He's in the lockdown again. See, Bojo the clown is going to be forced into opening that economy up down there again. People have only had their first jabs. They don't have complete immunity, and this thing mutates quite quickly, as we know. So wave number three could be on the cards here because those clowns doing that road are about to make the same bloody mistake they made last year. The field goes on, Harry and Meghan, eh, and the easing of the lockdown. Now it's ready, steady shop. And they're speculating that the shops will be open down that road again in about three weeks' time. All right. The garden goes on, number 10 resists Tory demands for end of lockdown by May. You know, May's a wee bit further down the line, but you can see a pattern emerging here. They are going to open up down there too quick again, and they, remember, um, we've been told that the figures down there are 15 million have had their job, and X amount in care homes have had their job, right. but they keep using the term, people have been offered a job. We don't really know how many have had it in their arms. Up here we know how many have had it in their arms. Because the numbers are published and they're verified by the NHS. Right. Aye, the sun goes on. A Valentine's Day joy for Harry and Meghan, baby number two. The Financial Times goes on. Republican rifts laid bare after saying it clears Trump. And that's what I've just been talking about. Um, it could well be that the Republican Party will not want in today with Trump. So those who are hardened and ardent Trump supporters within the Republican Party could well splinter off and we could see a new right-wing party arise in America. Could be pretty terrible. The star goes on. You couldn't make this up. Publicity shy woman tells 7.6 billion people I'm pregnant. <laughs> And the stars having to go at Harry and Meghan, or Meghan particularly, because she won her case last week, her privacy case, um, today with the letters to her dad that was published, I think it was at Times. 
you know. So the stars are the stars having a go at Harry and Meghan. Quite funny. Okay, now for the public service announcements. All right. Right, the, the, the mainstream media are in full SNP bad Scotland crap mode, right? So we have to fight away, we have to um, offer up alternatives, right? So Gordon Ross is back in his car, gave him a wee look, see what he's got to say. I'm back on air, needless to say, <laughs> right? Now, hey, follow Broadcasting Scotland on YouTube, especially the 7th. You know, it's a nightly news programme and it's very, very good, folks. Its viewership's no great, it needs support financially and it needs um, and it needs a uh, support uh, with viewer numbers on YouTube, right? If you can't afford to support it financially, just press subscribe on the YouTube channel and you'll see the programmes at night free anyway. Now, they've got a massive big studio on there in Cook Gardens, by the way. Really professional setup. But they need money and they need uh, people to help, right? So, so uh, follow broadcasting Scotland. By the way, they, they, they broadcast First Minister's questions and all these and a uh, Holyrood committee meetings and all that. So, I mean, it's quite a comprehensive setup they've got along there. But they need money and they need support. You can't get them money, subscribe to the YouTube channel and get your news for them in the evening. They're really good, quite a professional setup, all right? Subscribe to iScott Magazine. Alright, if you can afford that, subscribe to iScott Magazine. Monthly publication, really good magazine. So it is. Alright. Um, and then of course there's also Nori Hunter and Calgon uh, Radio at calgonmedia.com. Right. So, support the alternative media, promote the alternative media. Although I'm not promoting myself, I know you guys share it around. Um, and I'm really appreciative of that. I am. Um, I might have to become a wee bit more active as we get towards this election because the propaganda is going to be coming thick, fast and heavy. And it has to be looked at objectively and countered objectively. Alright, as I said last night when I came back for a short broadcast last night. Alright. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Now that I'm back. Um, I hope you found it entertaining and informative, and I hope you liked the stories I picked to run on. Now, there were other stories out there, of course there was. There was the, um, you know, the desperation of the unionists pulling people at a Lord Forsyth out of his crypt to pat him on the telly to tell us how poor we and stupid we are, and that the idea of independence is hairy-fairy economics. I mean, Lord Forsyth is a has-been. He's just had these news. That's why I'm not really making a news story of him. I could also went with Alex Cole Hamilton and uh, him telling a female colleague uh, to F off Marie. But I wouldn't want to give that hazard, that, but that waste of space any airtime either. But for that, you know, you'll probably know about it anyway. Okay. Right. Facts, folks. Okay. Time to wrap this one up. Time to take the directory work. Facts. Hey, face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings, but we're not allowed them anyway, but avoid large gatherings. Right? Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. And if you need a test, book one. Okay? Behave yourself, even if you've had the vaccine. You're at least 21 days before the the level of immunity that the first jab offers kicks in. So bloody well behave. And you'll not be totally protected until you've had your second jab. And if Matt Hancock's right, this is going to become an annual thing. Having to vaccinate 68 million people. Well, I don't suppose they're going to vaccinate the kids. So we can say 55 million people or whatever. Look after yourselves. I'll be back tomorrow. With the review of today's news. Hopefully in the truck. That's a dragon tell me to get my boohoo to work. Have a nice day. See you all tomorrow.